Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup and the Linux edition. All the fun things going on in the Linuxy type world. So today what we're going to do is we'll start out looking at a couple of changes, operating systems, desktop environments, and a whole bunch of weird Ubuntu news because Ubuntu got caught uh, got caught skinny dipping when the tide came out. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit here near the end. But uh, the Tails 6.1 has been released. We have upgrades to the Tor browser and to Thunderbird. Uh, they did fix the onion circuit issue and the uh, Tails welcome message that was having issues. They did not fix the uh, onion share yet, it would appear. And then they did a number of other things. Um, there was an issue with the Tails cloner and with changing your password on your persistent storage. Those are also now fixed. So just be aware of, of those that uh, uh, all of those items are fixed as we move on into the next version of Tails. So uh, if you are using Tails, next time you boot that up, if you haven't seen it already, then you will get the prompt to update to 6.1, of course, if you are already on 6. If you're on the 5 X, you have to uh, do the upgrade manually, but you can do the upgrade around your persistent storage. If you check out my last Tails video, uh, I upgraded a 5X to a 6X with preserving my persistent storage. So that is still something you can do so you don't have to wipe out your persistent storage. You can do it around there, but you might want to make a temporary backup of anything on there if you uh, if you need to. So there is um, there is what Tails is up to. The next edition of Gnome is out, 46, and there's actually a lot of interesting changes in this one. Um, so I have no idea why, by the way, I'm on my privacy banner, but uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and fix that. My apologies, folks. Uh, I was on my privacy banner for some reason. Anyway, um, so our, um, uh, our GNOME 46... This has a number of different issues uh, fixed and a number of new features. We have a headless remote desktop support, variable refresh rate support. That is still listed as experimental, uh, but you can now change that refresh rate from inside of the GNOME settings. We also have some changes to the online accounts. When you're first setting up, it no longer prompts you to add online accounts on the initial setup. Uh, using the stock GNOME. So, you, of course, you can still go in there anytime afterwards. But they've added, this is the addition we talked about when I was back at that bayou in, uh, was I in Arkansas, I think, where I did the outdoor, outdoor video talking about OneDrive coming to uh, GNOME. That is now in this release. So, of course, it's not something that's perpetually connected. It's just an option. Uh, they've always had the ability to add a Microsoft account. Now, as you add the Microsoft, account, now you can toggle the switch to manage your OneDrive files, which means that if you toggle that on and you're logged into a Microsoft account, you will have the extra option there to manipulate files in Nautilus directly onto your uh, OneDrive um, account. So that is actually a, a beneficial thing for some people. Of course, I don't have a OneDrive account, nor will I get one. However, there are people that do actually use Microsoft accounts. Some some of them are forced. The rest of them might just be mentally ill. <laughs> but I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Come on. It's a Linux channel. We got to make fun of Microsoft around here. Anyway, uh, they have a revamped Wi-Fi page. So if you are sharing the wireless via QR code, uh, you can see the the actual password when sharing the wireless and uh, they have a new Wacom page which is going to tell us which the active stylus is because apparently if you're using Wacom tablets you have multiple styli is it styli um, it should be styli right so um, they do have some new options as far as the network uh, page is going to show us new VPN and wired connections. So there really are a ton of different features inside of here. Of course, you can go in and look at the whole uh, uh, list here to see absolutely everything. I, I hover, covered here the uh, things I consider the best overall highlights. And now moving on into canonical news. First up is Canonical extends Ubuntu LTS support for Ubuntu Pro customers to 12 years. Uh, when I first looked at this, um, well, I, I actually I thought higher of it when I first looked at it. I'm like, 
So you're paying more money for an extra two years of support. So LTS uh, on using like the regular LTS, I believe is like five years of support. If you're using um, a Ubuntu Pro, you get 10 years of support. Now you can get an extra two years. So you can get up to 12 years of support. You might say, why would I possibly want to do that? The reason you do this is mostly for servers. So if it wouldn't be uncommon if you have an Ubuntu Pro account if you're managing servers. And it is a massive undertaking to migrate, particularly a large server. So you want to set up a server and keep that server running as long as possible. That's why this makes sense. Now, going from 10 years to 12 years, um, I, I don't know. Maybe it's an extra little cash grab. Of course, I can't understand an extra couple years is still an extra couple years. I mean, I'm looking at my servers right now going, yep, uh, my, one of my, um, one of my, um, uh, cPanel servers is on CentOS 7. Uh, so I'm like, well, this summer it's got to be moved to something else. <laughs> I have a hundred websites over there. <laughs> so uh, I understand. I completely understand. Uh, so that extra two years might be good as long as you're not procrastinating and waiting until, you know, uh, the spring before the server completely dies to think about migrating all those servers. So that being said, that is what they're doing. Uh, overall, this isn't going to necessarily be for the desktop user of Ubuntu. You say 12 years. Well, yeah, I mean, this is mostly for servers. And uh, they are making a improvement for games out of the box. So Ubuntu apparently has had some issues with games. The first big snafu they had was it was it um was it 20 I think 2004 where they dropped the 32-bit architecture and that caused a lot of issues. Uh, in fact, I remember I had a Linux Mint build based on that whichever one that would have been and I installed Wine on it and it just would not run a lot of stuff. Uh, I had to upgrade to the 2204 base in the next build to get everything working. Uh, just adding the extra architecture itself caused some issues. And, of course, they did that. Uh, this has to do with the max uh, VM max map count, which at Ubuntu was capped at 65,530, and that is way too low for many games. So they're bumping that up to the same level that is used for Fedora and Pop! OS. Both Fedora and Pop! OS have better reputations for being better at building gaming on. In fact, uh, when I couldn't get Linux Mint working super well, I did that on Pop! OS. Apparently, it has to do with that particular variable. So Ubuntu is raising that default value uh, significantly higher, which is going to allow better performance in a lot of games. So if you are using Linux for gaming and you do really like Ubuntu and you're forced to use something else to get some of your games to work, the 2404 LTS might solve that problem for you. So that's uh, good news for everybody. And now on to the, um, the audits. Of course, after battling for a couple months, these malware guys, of course, we did a, was it last week? I think our supporter stream was about this where they just were playing these whack-a-mole because there was no human intervention between somebody putting up software on the Snap Store because Ubuntu, they just want this massive Snap Store that has all these applications. And yeah, when you do that, um, you are inviting scammers. That was the big problem with Windows Store when it first hit the market. They were just like inviting everybody to add their apps, and that just leaves the way for scammers. So um, Alan Pope did a great blog post and he said, hey, there needs to be a couple things you do now. And one of those is you need to start auditing these things. Now, they had their release back in the famous blog post and was that May 15th, 2019, I think it was, 2018. I think it was May 15th, 2018, where they talked in there about trusting the developers and not auditing all of the code. And this was a big controversial thing because the, first, the people that are quote unquote, trusting the developers are like Microsoft and Facebook and people, many of us using Linux moved to Linux to avoid. So I don't really want to trust them anyway. But that being said, uh, are, they're not going to do malware. They're just going to spy on you. 
in that blog post where they were talking about trusting the developer, well, they talked in there about having, you know, having a lot of a trust model for the developers. Well, somewhere between 2018 and now they dropped that and anybody can just create an account and start uploading snaps. Uh, and this guy, they, they had uploaded, uh, was it 10 malicious snaps that were just fishing for your crypto wallet information. Alan Pope identified them and alerted the snap store through his, his friends there. They took them down and the, wouldn't you know it 24 hours later, the same apps are up again with a same username or a slightly, slightly tweaked username. And so now they're finally like, okay, we're going to manually review things that come up. About time. Now, does this solve the snap issues? Does this mean Linux Mint's going to be like, wow, I'm going to start using this? No. The ultimate fundamental problem with the snap store is that it still has a centralized and proprietary distribution method. You cannot distribute snaps outside of their singular proprietary centralized distribution system, which even though the snap itself is open source the distribution system is not and that still raises some issues but at least they're making a step in the right direction so we must praise ubuntu for making a step in the correct direction as they do that well if you want to help support the channel we do have a patreon page patreon.com slash t-o-m-m you can jump on over there and uh, help support the channel and of course, uh, this is where you get information about the fact that, hey, uh, no show tonight, but there's a hangout. So if you missed the show yesterday, if you were following on here, which eh, you can follow this without uh, uh, without paying. But we also have the short stories. Of course, if you are a supporter and you did not see it a couple days ago, we dropped the audio book for the latest short story. And of course, you can go and read the uh, you can go and read the um, uh, full audio book there. Those are on Patreon. They are also on Think Life Media. They are on Subscribe Star and they are on Locals. So you can jump into any of those if you want to help support the channel. With that, thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.